Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I'm going to open up and show you an inside look as well as how to service a reel that we uh, uh, just got in. This is a Cast King Speed Demon Elite Reel. It's got a very fast retrieve, 10.5 to 1. It's got 10 bearings plus the anti-reverse bearing. It's on an aluminum frame, a uh, quick release uh, side cover. It's got what's called the Demon Eye Adjuster on the outside for your drag adjust. And well, just a very nice reel overall. I understand the gearing inside of this is a manganese type of a, uh, an alloy. And well, it's a lightweight reel. It feels good in the hands. And we're going to show you how to take this reel apart, how to service it, how to keep it fishing for a long time to come. Well, the first thing let's uh, show you is how to remove that spool. There's a little clip lever right here on the base. It says open and sure enough just pops up and out of the way. Couldn't be easier to do that. And we should be able to pull that spool out. On the spool you're going to notice we have a, a ball bearing here. Well, I like to keep the uh, spool bearings lubricated and I use oil by choice. I use fishing reel oil and I make sure that it's got a nice drink in there. These are shielded bearings. They're not sealed. So, of course, this reel is pretty new, <laughs> so I just uh, put a little bit of oil back in there. We should also find a corresponding bearing on this side case. We do. So I'm going to go ahead and oil that one as well. This has a track here where the spool is going to ride, and it's got a mag adjuster that's going to um, set your, your feel for the spool tension. I'm going to leave that open for now. We're going to, I always like to take the spool out because, well, when you're servicing a reel, you want to pay attention. Is there a screw from the inside holding that side plate on? In this case, there is. It's right here. So I'm going to remove that. And I'm thinking as I put this screwdriver in, I may need the micro screwdrivers to, uh, to service this reel. So before you get started on doing a reel, any reel, but a reel like this. Go ahead and make sure you have the schematic for the reel. Now, Cast King includes this schematic in the uh, box when you purchase the reel. It gives you a good look in terms of what you're going to see inside the reel, and it's a good road map in case you get stuck. If you do get stuck, go back to that and see where the orientations are on the reel, and that will help you reset yourself. Of course, another good way to do that is to take pictures as you go along, and that way, well, you'll have reference points at critical junctions, and if you stalled, if you put the reel down, if you forgot to do something, those are all good opportunities to um, get yourself right again. All right, I think I can close this up for the moment now. Let's lock that in place. When I take the pieces and parts off, I like to put them into a parts tray. I use a fast food container for that purpose. And, uh, well, while I'm doing this, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. My channel tries to show all aspects of fishing reels from just kind of product reviews right up through how to service them and keep them fishing for a long time to come. And I also like to uh, share a little bit about the manufacturers, the distributors, the industry, all uh, topics that are relevant to folks that like fishing reels and would like to learn more. If you're one of those folks, I would encourage you to subscribe. And if you do subscribe, please use that notification button. Today I'm working on a new um, bait casting reel. Tomorrow it might be a vintage spinning reel or a trolling reel. We never know. But um, what we do know is there's good variety here, and if you enjoy fishing reels, well, this is probably the place for you. I've removed the handle. It goes in my parts tray. I've removed the washer underneath the handle. Notice that on one side of this we have some little slots or ridges. That's for the click mechanism, and that click mechanism, I got lucky, it almost fell out of my hands. It's a little point right there. You might be able to see that. You don't want to lose that. That sits in the star adjuster, and boy, is that a little one. So, you lose it, you won't have any click-click 
when you're adjusting the ratchet. So I'm just going to put that back in my pliers for a moment here. See if I can't get that back in. Then we'll glove up and we'll go do the, the service on this reel. Boy, that guy's... That's a challenge for small hands. Right now I think I'm just going to put the two of those in there and deal with that later. Okay, good place to take the picture. We have a spring that's next. Then we have the nut that's actually going to act as the, the tighten and loosen pressure on your drag washers. And again, this is all shown on that schematic. So that if you get these out of sync, you know where to go. For example, on this one, the nut has a flat side on the one side and it has a raised shoulder on the other. The spring is going to mount on this side, so this is going to face up. The spring is going to go on top of it like that. Okay, I'm going to put a glove on because I'm sure there's creases in that inside here, and I do generally like to keep the grease off my hands when I work on wheels. Okay, there's a bearing here. I think we probably don't need to remove that at this point. We took the one screw out of the inside here. We have two more screws below, and it looks like we have two more screws over here. So Casking is still using the Phillips head screws or the uh, Japanese industrial screw standards. I'm not quite sure which one it is, but my Phillips head screwdriver is working here, so we'll continue with that. When you take these out, notice the screws. In this case, there's a small screw there that appears to be different from the other three screws. You want to check for the length of the screw, the uh, thickness of the screw, and the like because they're not all the same all the time and this will help you. This is a uh, little clamp that goes into the bottom of the reel that holds this screw. So when you go to reinstall, notice this one has got a rough machine thread on it. It's different than the other and this little clamp probably will come out when we take the case off if it doesn't fall out before. Two more screws Again, I'm using a micro screwdriver here. This one is a machine thread. One more up top here. So we've had a couple of different screws in here. Just pay attention to them. These two are the side plate screws on the front. I'll put those with the rough thread screws below. So one, two, three, four, and of course the one that came out of the back of this wheel. Okay, before we move uh, the case, I did want to take this ring off to make sure that we were okay here, that there were no tie downs or are not. And the other thing I wanted to do was remove this uh, screw hold here. That will get in the way of uh, removing this case if you don't take that out. So with that, we should be able to remove the case now. Slides right off. Take a picture. This is a very important spot of the assembly process. You want to take the picture of what those gears look like. Take a picture of the back. Now we have this uh, short shaft here that comes through. So I'm going to put that with the cap here. That's going to come back in. That's just part of your spool tensioning device. We have the s sleeve spacer. It's also the inside race for your anti-reverse clutch. And you want to notice on that that you have the two slots on this one, or studs. They're going to fall into the slots of the main gear here. Okay, the back doesn't have anything other than a bearing. So again, we can put some oil on that bearing. The bearing, if you need to remove it, does have a pentagon clip in it that you'll need to remove to push that through. This is your anti-reverse clutch, and you do not uh, add any greases or oils to that. Before I go any further, I do want to remove these two yoke springs because they have a tendency to fall out when you move pieces and parts around and uh, you don't want to spend your time searching for them. You'd rather spend your time 
uh, servicing the reel. All right, well, while I moved this, when I was taking off the case, these little clips fell out of their grooves that they sit in for the lock washer in your drag system. So just be aware of that, that when we go to reinstall, they need to be in these slots. We can pull that whole main gear assembly up. Let's lay that out for you. You have a top cap with a bell on it and the two slots that I just mentioned. So you'll see the two studs in here are going to go into the two slots in that case. It'll look like this. Just like that. They will sit flush and they go into that hole there. And you'll notice this side has a belly and this side uh, has a protrusion on it. The protrusion side faces up. In case you have your reel apart and you were wondering. Underneath that we have carbon tax drags. We have one and then we have an ear washer. Then we have a narrower one. So let's not get these out of order. Narrower one. And then we have a wide washer with an inset to it. I'm going to go like that. Then we have a wide washer in the case. Then we have the main gear. Underneath the main gear we have a washer, the trip ratchet, and the drive for your level line guide. Those come out. Okay, underneath that then we have our yoke and our pinion gear. They pull off. You can separate those. When you go to reinstall, you want to notice that there are ramps that are trip ramps. Those are going to face inward. On your pinion gear, you have a wide side with slots. Those are going to face inward. So it's going to go this way when you go to reinstall. You should have on this side facing you cavities for those little springs that we just removed place that assembly in there. Okay, what we have left then is we have our trip mechanism and you want to make sure that the trip mechanism works okay. You've got a couple of things that you can do if it's not. The first one is you may want to check your channels for excess grease. Now this has got the factory grease in it. We'll show you how this works. You're going to push down and it's going to rotate this assembly and push this down goes like that. When your trip mechanism, put that back on for a moment, when your trip mechanism is engaged, you want to know two things. There's, there's hooks on this trip, trip mechanism. Don't put it in this way. That won't work. So you need to make sure that you take pictures as you do this, that those claws or ridges face to accept this. All right, we'll do that again. We're going to push that down. You'll see how it intersects and then it will trip back up. So when you have the reel apart, make sure that you look, identify the pieces and the orientations of it and go back to your schematics if necessary. Okay, if this is sticking for some particular reason, you want to check the tracks you can use a penetrating oil. If you find that there's a buildup of dirt or grease or the like, just put the penetrating oil in here. That'll help loosen it up. Use a cotton swab. Come in and clean it up. Now this is new from the factory. doesn't need to have that done. If you notice that you've got a sticking with your thumb button here, well that part is over here. So what you would do is you can remove the screw here to take your arm off and then pull this up. You've got a little spring here, right here. It attaches on one side and the other spring comes through the carrier here on this particular button. So one, two, three, four, five screws that will uh, help you along the way. If you think it's the arm, and I don't know if I've ever seen an arm failure, this arm is a hook. It's going to come here through the case and it's going to attach to the back of the button. You may or may not be able to see it. There are two Phillips head screws. I'm not sure if I can get it. One, two. 
one, two, three, four, that releases the metal piece from your thumb and guides it back. Okay, so if you are having a failing button, make sure that the internal side is clean. You can try to clean the metal, but that's generally not the issue. The, the issue is generally in this section here. Make sure that your spring is not broken. This spring right here. Make sure that you do not have the dirt in the tracks or old grease that could impede that. And of course, if you've had the reel apart, make sure that your click ratchet assembly, the little click ratchet is facing in the right direction when you go to put that back on. One of the neat things about this reel is that your line guide will not move when you cast. So whenever you're in a situation where you need to cast the reel, make sure that you center that line guide before you make your cast. That's because the line guide drive is on this side of the reel. The drive is this plastic piece here. And when you disengage your spool from casting, well, there's no spool drive for the line guide. So depending on which reel you may have or may have used in the past, sometimes you'll find that the non-gear side of the spool has the line guide drive on it. In this case, it's controlled from this side. Your line guide will not move during casting. Center it because that will create the shortest throw between the the, the poles of the spool, they'll all go out the center and uh, while well, you'll get a more efficient cast from it. And let's put it back. We showed you the inside of it. We will do a little bit here. I noticed that the could be some grease that we could use here. So let's, uh, let's take the opportunity. Uh, I don't have the casking grease. So I'm going to use a fishing wheel grease though. You want to grease your pinion gear. And then remember what we said, the ones with the ramps face in, the slots on the spool face in. Go ahead and put that back in. And make sure that you're on the posts. And then flush to the case here. Now if you're not flush to the case, you may need to reset your, your arm there. As we mentioned, we have a click ratchet and the beaks on this correspond to the trip lever here. They're facing in an up position. The next piece on then is your uh, washer between the main gear. And now your main gear. This has got the factory grease in it. Now if, you, if you've been fishing the reel a while and you uh, Finding that it's just not time to service it, take a hard brush. It can be a bristle brush, it can be a toothbrush for all that matters. Just take a hard brush, pull out the old grease, wipe it down. And in this case, we're in good condition with that. There's factory greases in there already, but I'll just add a little bit more because I've taken the, the old grease out as a demonstration there. You can see how this reel can be 10.5 to 1. That's a huge main gear and a very small pinion gear. That means for every one rotation of your main gear, this is going to turn 10 and a half times. Wow, that's a high speed reel. Bring your main, main gear in and on and merge it with your pinion gear. And then we can work our way back up the channel. First in then is that Carbon Tex washer. Now, Carbon Tex washers are optional as far as uh, greasing them. You don't need to. They have limited ability uh, to absorb greases and oils, and greases and oils are used to keep the washers from uh, breaking down, from drying out and cracking or um, rotting away, if you will. Carbon Tex uh, uh, is built of a more durable product. And uh, well, you don't need to, to grease them. You can, if you do decide to grease them, put a light coating of grease on, wipe it off like this, so that you can see the ridges in that carbon text disc before you reinstall. All right, we said the two of those that have the big holes or broad holes, they go underneath. 
Then we have the four tabs and there's four associated insets in the main gear. This is what's going to hold the main gear during lockdown of the drags. It sits nice like that. Then the top one is just enough to clear the arbor on your gear shaft here. So it should set inside. Limited movement should not fall out. And then we have our beveled washer here. Again, the slots are going to face up and the belly faces down. Now we have our drive, our spacer, and that locks in. Make sure when you lock it in that you are tight to the washer. Okay, with that in place then, we can take a moment here to install the springs or the yoke. I almost always forget to do that. I don't know why, it's just getting the habits. I have a habit of leaving those behind. The two springs. We want to take our case, bring the case over the top, center everything. sure it's nice and square, that it goes on nice and easy, and that you have all of the seams tight. Remember, we're going to put that back uh, in as part of this uh, exercise here. Okay, the first thing I can do, don't want to lose this piece. This is the short shaft that's going to hold your pinion gear and your bearing set the right way. There is a little indentation on the shaft, so make sure it goes through those two slots there and sits low. All right, let's go back then and take the screws so that we can take some of the pressure off of the hand holding the case together. The two with the machine threads go on this side. I'll get one of those started. And this is where the parts tray is going to be helpful because you have all of your pieces in the tray organized. Now, it's not the only way to manage your parts that you take off of a reel, but it's the way I use. And I recommend that whatever you choose, you saw how, for example, I laid out the, the drag washers in the uh, order that they came off so that they could go back in easily. Maybe you choose to do that for the entire reel, and that's okay. But just make sure you have a plan before you start taking them off. Okay. All right, those two will help me release, um, release the tension on that. I'm going to go ahead and put that silver screw in the back here right now. And work my way around in terms of closing off the case. Well, if you have any questions on this reel or any reel, maybe you're working on one and you're stuck, Leave those questions in the comment section. I will try to answer those for you. Now, generally, I answer those questions in the morning. So if your uh, evening is approaching and that's and you're working on a reel and you're stuck, uh, just give me a little bit of time in the morning. I should try to get that answer to you. There is a shim washer that goes next. It goes behind the bearing. And we have our bearing. And quite honestly, I can't remember if I oiled this one or not, so as a measure of safety, go ahead and put that bearing in. Next up then, we had the two tension washers. They're bent. Don't unbend them. And before I go any further, I want to take a moment to put those other two screws back in. People are probably wondering, am I getting carried away here? No, 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 a little bit. All right, the widest screw went below. Remember what we said, we have to put that little hold fast in here. Just bring that down. Make sure it sits nice and even. 
and you can insert your screw, tighten that up. And then we have the small screw. Then we have the part that I'm going to get nervous about. It's that little, I call them rocket washers. You find them on some reels as noisemakers. In this case, my hands are very big and that part is very small. So to see how I can manage to get that piece in there. Okay, all those screws are in the case. Also take a moment to put the spool back in at this point. Just close your gap. I love the way these doors work here. Very nice and simple and easy. Okay. Two tension washers are on. Next up then, as we mentioned, was this nut. And this nut faces up with that ridge to support that spring. When you do this, you want to make sure that the nut is down as far as you can turn it down. This is what's going to be tightening your drag, but also when you go to install the handle, it's just a lot easier to do that. All right, before I go putting any more of the hardware on here, we have that small piece in there. Let's go ahead and put that small adjuster back on. And yes, there is a little noisemaker or a click spring in here. Make sure that you hear that as you do that. Okay, that goes back on. Next up is the spring. And we bring our star adjuster on. And this is, this is where I'm going to apologize to everybody right up front. This is going to be interesting. If I struggle with this, you'll know why. I'm going to try a little pliers here. I don't want to lose this little piece and it, and it certainly could be easy to lose. Wow, it is just it's fighting me the whole way. Okay, that was fun. I had to stop for a moment, just catch my breath and uh, do it again. We have it in there. And that will make the noise. I'm going to bring this over and down. Then you need to turn it so that it meshes onto the nut. Two sides, a thin, uh, a smooth side and a ridge side. The ridge side goes down. That's what that little noisemaker is going to be making its noise with. The handle goes next. pressure on the handle, the nut cap. Now you can oil right into the hole there. You can oil that. Again, hand tighten. You want to make sure that you're you're all good in terms of not cross stripping this cap. And you can bring this down. I can hear that little noisemaker doing its job. And we can take our 10 millimeter wrench, tighten down the handle. And now we're going to need to align the, the cap with the screw for the tie down. Generally, if this flat part is at a 90 or perpendicular to that, you will get it. And I got it. And one more final little screw here that's going to hold your tie down in place. So this is a beautiful reel you saw inside of it. Nice quality materials behind it. And uh, big, big gear, fast turning gears. What are you going to use this for? Well, if you're ever fishing in cover, you're going to want to rip that uh, plug through that cover. And, uh, this is the reel to do that. All right, let's make sure we did it all together. So we, what did we do here? We, we showed you how to take the reel off completely. We showed you that as you're removing the case, this could potentially snag on the main gear. You do need to remove this little uh, screw cover cap thing. We showed you how to access the spool by removing the switch over here to an open position, removing the spool because as you go to remove the cover, there is one more screw in the back hiding. We showed you how to take that off, 
showed you how to identify all of the different screws that are in the case for reassembly. We took it all apart. We showed you the common failure on a trip release button and uh, I gave you some hints about if you need to restore that. If it's not a broken part like a spring, we showed you where that spring was located, then it's likely it's um, dirty grease or debris or something else in there, either associated with the way that the lever comes down and doesn't trip in, or maybe it's not meshing completely with that, um, that click ratchet on the bottom of the main gear. We showed you how to set the main gear drag system up. We showed you how to reinstall the reel, including the little spool extension here, or shaft extension. We showed you the drag system inside and how those various components are in. And then we showed you how to put the reel back together again. So let's, uh, let's give it a try. That's working fine here. It's a nice smooth reel and you can just see how quickly that spool turns. We have the free spool release and in this case I've got it buttoned down pretty tight. If you want to adjust for a freer spin, just turn this counterclockwise and out and that will give you a very fast spinning spool. If you want to reduce that spin, turn it in a clockwise manner to uh, move it forward. Well, I hope you've enjoyed an inside look at this, a little lesson on how to service this reel, and a little discussion about that thumb bar release in case it's sticking. So, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. I want to take a moment to thank all of you for viewing. I appreciate everybody who watches. And again, if you haven't subscribed, I do uh, encourage you to subscribe to see more videos like this. With that said, I wish everybody great fishing and a great day.